Act. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, traders. Welcome to the Bookmap Pro Trader webinar series for March 18th today. Uh, today we have Raggy Horner. She started trading at the tender age of 15 while still in high school. Uh, she has a passion for communicating the message of the markets as well as teaching traders how to find an edge uh, in both currency and futures markets. Uh, she's published three different books, uh, has countless speaking engagements and seminars, uh, and is the chief currency analyst for IBFX, uh, which bought out F FXCM, uh, and uh, trips across the globe. So Reggie shares all that she does and has learned at simplercurrencies.com. Um, so I have all of her contact information here, okay, that um, you can see her website, uh, her, her Twitter feed, uh, YouTube channel, uh, and then here's her email as well. Uh, and then also the special offers that you can get for Bookmap from Raggy. Okay, so I, don't worry about all of this here. I will put it into the chat uh, for you guys uh, and um, need to go through the risk disclaimer as well. Uh, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, this webinar is recorded, uh, and uh, we'll have it up on our YouTube channel later this afternoon, just like the other ones, okay? If you want our YouTube channel, just go to youtube.com and search for Bookmap and click on the logo, okay? So I'm putting all of our information in here to the chat. Uh, let's uh, turn it over to Raggy and, uh, and take it from there. All right, traders, let me... Uh get the screen going here. I'm not even sure which screen's being shared. Hang on one sec. I yeah, we, we, we see your book map. Oh, you see the, okay. Uh, well, we see uh, the ES here. Okay, let me make sure I got the right screen. That's always the fun part. Let's see, not that one, not that one. There we go. Boom, okay, you should see a screenshot of yes. a book map. All right. Thanks as always, everyone, for coming. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, just a quick little breakdown of who I am and what I do. Uh, yeah, at 15, I started writing covered calls on the IBM stock that my father gave me. Uh, I started getting curious about the markets at a very young age. It sure beat babysitting like all my friends were doing. Uh, by the time I got to college, I was pretty much flunking out because all I was doing was trading commodities from my dorm room. And uh, it just kind of went from there. So I've been trading full time since uh, graduating college in 93. I started doing uh, some SOS, some of you might remember that, small order execution system, direct access day trading stocks back in the day. And, you know, fast forward, I, I only mention that because you're talking to someone who came up as a trader having to draw their own charts. Uh, no internet, no no book map, you know, no no, no direct access, uh, order execution, no transparency, no depth of market, no level two. So when I when I look back over three decades of what I have been and have not been able to see, you know, to have something like this when I started day trading in the mid 90s, uh, small order execution, or to have something like this when I tr started trading the e minis when they became available in, in 1999, 2000, 2001 with uh, the ES and QYM, you know, before that we were we were listening to squawk. We were we were riding our orders to the pits and hoping we wouldn't get you know too taken advantage of by the time our order got there and was filled. So it's it's very different now and it's it's amazing what we were able to see. And so that kind of gives you a breakdown of, of what I've been doing across different markets. And and what we're going to talk about here today, I had a I had a an, a plan to talk about time and looking at certain times of day and the order flow on Bookmap. And that quickly uh, basically got supplanted by the fact that we had yet today another big limit down, uh, whether it's a limit down or a limit up. So I thought, you know what, let me switch gears to what I did today, show you why and what I did and how Bookmap gave me an edge, uh, a tremendous edge over other types of analysis that I, that I use. In fact, right now, I am in an S&P short, which ended up being almost 10 points ahead of my projected level 
and, and Bookmap was the reason. So I, I hope that as we kind of go through this, you'll see the advantage of Bookmap offers. And um, I'm using the DX feed, by the way. The last time I spoke with you, I'll use, I used the transact feed. And just a quick aside about feeds. One of the things that I did not want to see is that traders that that I teach and and you know we do a live alert service, so everything that I do is is done time stamped in a live chat room. But a lot of those traders are using brokerages where they can just pipe in their feed into Bookmap, which is fine uh, for a lot of our traders. It's Transact. I have nothing against Transact. I think that it's an easy way for traders and, and probably the lowest cost barrier for traders to get the book map subscription or, or and then, then add the transact data which is fine because for the most part if you're looking at near-term levels not necessarily further up projections but making near-term decisions based on near-term levels i think it will suffice and it would break my heart if traders were thinking that they had to get book map and then a separate feed to see what it's capable of doing. I think what I've found with traders who are um, using Bookmap is they'll start off with some sort of feed that they have, they can plumb in from their, their current futures broker, and then eventually they say, wait a minute, there's more I can do with this, and then they net very naturally sort of evolve to the DX feed, because at that point, this product, this tool is paying for itself, and it justifies you know, expanding the capabilities of what it can do. And, and that's sort of the, the growing, the step-by-step -step growth that I encourage my traders to, to follow. Um, listen to me now, believe me later, that's fine, but how about just kind of prove to yourself that this is a needle mover in your trading. All right, so let's. So having said all that, let's get to it. I'm gonna start off with um, just a look at, all right, so I'm gonna take you guys back to something that's not book map related, something you can go check out. And this is what I do every day is I, head on over to a site called Finviz. And, and by the way, yes, you can trade currencies and you can see some of these great levels on Bookmap as well. Finviz is a free site. You don't need to log in or anything. But what I want to look at is the one day relative performance of the currencies. I like to trade currencies. Bookmap is great for currencies. So I'll, I'll take a look at that. Now today, this is not this morning's relative performance, but today we had in fact, you can see it right now. Let me show, let me put this, uh, I don't know if you actually can see it, but um, we, have a, we have a lot of yen strength. Yen is the number two strength story today. And it still is, by the way. It's the number two strongest currency in a one-day relative performance, which usually, which usually has me looking to the, um, the downside of the market. I'm usually gonna be a bear, all right? So, then what I want to do is look at the fact that the limit, and this is specific to today and specific to action that we've seen for uh, a couple weeks now, a limit move is going to basically supplant anything else. You know, when I'm looking at my playbook led by yen strength or weakness, when I'm looking at my playbook based on being at the top or bottom of the range uh, to be primarily bullish or bearish, once I get that limit move, I know for about the first 90 minutes after the reopen, that limit move is gonna be the only playbook. And that typically entails wanting to fade the gap down like we had today initially. So you can see, you know, this is the, this is the view that I had earlier, the view many of you had earlier. And clearly we had the market stuck up here and we knew it was gonna open down in this area. We saw what the size was. And, and so that, that's where I, and first realizing, as many of you are, okay, that's where we're gonna open, that's where the initial support could be, but I'm not gonna buy right away at that level, okay? What I wanna do, and this is, this is what I'm gonna watch on book map, for about the first 30, to one, uh, sorry, 60, for the first 60 to about 180 seconds, in other words, for the first minute to three, in this case, after the market opens, this happens, I'm gonna see the highs that are put in the market because I do want to be a buyer. The gap, the gap, not gap down, the limit down initiates for me only a bullish bias. I wanna be a buyer. But book map's gonna give me some insight into where the highs during that first three minutes could be put in. And then if we take out those highs, I'll see some 
bullish momentum. I'll see almost like a, like a catapulting action. And so you can see that right here. What I'm gonna point out is what I was looking for, which is this right in here, okay? Where was the size? Where were the, where were the highs and lows put in? In about the first minute or so. There's another layer that was put in, uh, another high that was put in right about here. Okay, so that means that scalpers, in my mind, what this is doing is giving me the x-ray vision to understand that as we take out that first minute, as we take out that third minute, that's what I've done in my career previously. I would just use time. But now what I can do, based on the transparency of seeing the order flow, I can not only use that same time window, but now I can see specifically which price levels are most likely to create that sort of catapulting action, okay? So I'm adding sort of time-tested, you know, time-based understanding of the way the market behaves after, in this case, that limit down move. And then I'm adding that extra layer of X-ray vision transparency by seeing a little bit more clearly, as you can see, where those catapulting actions will take place because I can see the highs and lows according to the volume, those volume thresholds, right? Those participation thresholds are going to give me a lot more, in my mind, confirmation that I'm hitting a tripwire, that there's really a level of meaning being broken to the upside, giving me an opportunity to get long. All right. So what was really interesting is before the day starts, as many of you who are S&P traders probably know, um, you know, we keep some levels in mind. I have a few levels still in mind. Uh, one was the 2447 halfback, right? A lot of you probably use halfback levels and understand the uh, halfway point be, you know, of the previous session is a hugely important psychological level. And that halfback level I was looking at was 2447, meaning if we get up to 2447, I'd start looking at book map to identify whether or not there was resistance in that area and whether or not size was building up to coordinate with a fade of that high, a fade of that halfback. Okay, so again, I'm marrying sort of time-tested, more classic uh, S&P price analysis, volume analysis, you can call it market profile and volume profile levels with book map. So we are fading, we are buying based on these, you know, the first 60 seconds to 180 seconds and, and having book map show me where those those catapulting moments are most likely to occur, right? So I'm long and I'm gonna remain bullish until I get start closing into 2447. I'm not even thinking about shorting. Now I know that book map is telling me, hey, Rog, we're probably gonna see some selling pressure around 2393 to 2394, which is really important to know because I know the closer I get to 2400, I'm more likely to see selling pressure. So now I know, with a high degree of accuracy, where if I have one of my many targets, because I'm gonna scale out as the market moves in my favor, maybe this is T1 or T2, target one or target two for me. I'll scale out, I'll pay myself while I can, not when I have to, but I still believe that 2447 is sort of where I feel I can start to short. I still wanna be a buyer up until that point. So different layers of support are gonna be what I'll use for, uh, re-entries to the long side and so levels like this become very useful to me okay because i'm able to keep a bullish bias by the way all right so then moving on through the day and i'm, I'm literally taking you through my use of the book map throughout the trades that i took and called uh, i knew the closer i get to this level the happier i'd be i didn't quite touch it which is fine which is fine had i i would have bought again i didn't so i didn't buy again and I know, see, now take a look. I was being opportunistic. Bottom of the range, right? Bottom of the range buys. In this case, top of the range. What do I want to do? I want to pay myself. Take profits off the table. All right. So as I'm reaching this area, well, yes, I want to be proactive about scaling out a little bit. Remember, because I had the bullish bias and the gap down, and I had book map helping me out, I'm already long, right? I'm already long. Thank you very much. Both time and book maps transparency. Okay, so now I'm gonna pay myself. Not get short, but just pay myself. Because again, 2447 is still that level I have in mind. All right, so uh, by the way, are we, are we are, were there any questions that I'm, let me take a look at the questions here if there are any. Not Not yet. 
that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thanks, thanks. All right, so when I say pay yourself while you can, not when you have to, I think a lot of traders tend to overstay their welcome, especially when they're paying, playing momentum. So I may not even wait to reach the layers of resistance on the chart. I might start offering out my SPY calls. I might start offering out, sort of scale out of my ES calls or SPY calls or even my ES uh, mini or micro before we get there, right? So it gives me what I believe a heads up to something that most traders just are gonna find out by surprise. So I can be a lot more proactive about these. And, and, and I can do what's known as step out in front of size because I can see the size. I can jump the line because I see where the line forms, right? Okay, so then moving on to, all right, here we go. So moving a little further ahead, so we've already we've already seen the market. That's back in 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 here. We've already seen the market tackle 2400. It shot up to 2415, and that's fine. But one thing a lot of you will have noticed, and look at the way. So a lot of traders said, "Oh no!" So I'll just give you an idea, including my head. Went, "Oh man, I scaled out too soon, right?" Because we all have the pig in the head. And then I got to remember, wait a minute. Bookmap isn't just showing me a candlestick, right? What is a candlestick doing? A candlestick is just moving higher, right? That's what a candlestick looks like. It's not giving you sort of the guts of the move. When you look at this, look at the way the activity is here. And you see all this space in between? Look at this activity. Does this look like that? Right, I'm getting this visual as it's happening. Yes, we're, we're just running up through 2400, but I know it's a very precarious run. Why? Look at the structure of the move. Look at the holes in the move. It's almost like they're they're sort of leaping ahead, running ahead. They're not even, there's no traction there. There's less participation there. What do we know as book map traders? Volume, participation, it's everything, right? So I'm literally looking at the structure of this and I see the structure let me just point it out one more time because I thought this was so great because I had to check myself. I'm like, darn it, this is going to be one of those darn ripping up days or maybe there's some news or or maybe the virus bill was who the heck knows. Maybe, you know, the Treasury Secretary is on television. Maybe there was a tweet and then I remembered, wait a minute, Rog, there's no substance to this move. Let it go. And in fact, don't even commit to it because it's out on a limb. Yeah, that's another way to, to really look at it. This was the really healthy thick part of the limb. Do you see the structure? And this is the thin part of the limb. That's another way I look at it, okay? If that maybe resonates better as an analogy, as a metaphor. All right, so sure enough, what happens? Boom, limb breaks, limb breaks. We did what? We paid ourselves what we could, not when we have to. And then what do we know? Well, if I'm gonna buy again, I'm gonna wait for size. And if that size can correspond with levels that you're already looking at, all the better, all the better. But really what I wanted to point out here was pay yourself while you can, not when you have to, and then look at the structure. Is it is it the thick, healthy part of the limb, or are you way out at the thin part of the limb? And and the structure looks completely different, completely different. Okay, so that takes us from there to there. Okay, here's the next shot. Here's the next shot. All right. So. Let's see. All right, so we, we shoot down, we, we go back up because remember, I'm still thinking 2447. So even though if the market's pulling back, the bullish bias that I have from the gap down, fading the gap, I know that typically is gonna last about 90 minutes, you know, 60 to 90 minutes, I'm still a buyer. I'm still looking to the long side. Another thing that many of you can, can put on your book map, and I put this on my charts, but you can put it on book map, is the volume weighted average price. And generally speaking, if I'm north of the volume weighted average price, I'm gonna keep a bullish bias as well, all right? In fact, if I'm above the clearing range low, I'm gonna keep a bullish bias as well. So there's a lot of ways you can have sort of the confidence to say, look, I know book map's gonna show me 
highs and lows. I'm not going to kind of ping pong between those, although some traders do, and that's great. I'm not them. We've got plenty of great experienced presenters here at Bookmap and, and maybe watch one of them that's a little bit more active on both sides. Uh, I tend to go one way once I have that conviction. Right. So uh, the pullbacks are great. And you can see why the pullbacks, I think, for us waiting for the, not the resistance to short into, but the pullbacks to buy into served us really well. And then all of a sudden, here I am thinking, I'm really going to see 2447. I'm thinking to myself, all right, 2447, here we come. Because remember, that's kind of more classic S&P trading analysis. What's my halfback? All right. Okay. So then I'm waiting for this market to give me little pullbacks to buy, still on my way to 2447, where I'm going to start to think about shorting. I've already taken a really nice ride to the upside. And then I want to think, start to think about shorting and I can see there's some thin levels of resistance, but not a lot. Now, let me show you what my chart looked like at, at the time. All right, this is the picture of my chart at the time. So all of a sudden I'm realizing that there's always the chance and I'm not going to know if I didn't have book map, I'm not going to know, but there's always the chance that the market could fall shy of 2447, that I simply may not get there. I might keep testing a certain level. And I'm going to show you my live book map here right now because what happened here, let me show you. Uh, I think you guys should be able to see this. So this is, this is a current look at the book map. And what I want to show you is the fact that I never got my 47. Take a look at where the resistance kept stacking up. Y'all see that? 2440. Now, if I did not have book map, as I didn't for many years. Like many of you know from the first presentation, I've been using Bookmap uh, since Q1 of last year. Before Bookmap, I might have been waiting and waiting and waiting for 2447. What happened? Because I could see, sort of, again, that X-ray vision, 2440 just kept steady with the selling size. I'm thinking, wow, I, I may not get that. I'm only seven points away. Right? I'm only seven points away from this level that I want. I'm in the vicinity and book map saying, Rob, you may not see that because look, we keep getting that. Look at this. This is, this is a shot at, um, here, I'll tell you right now. So I timestamp this, 1014 a.m. Eastern. This is you know here, but take a look at how many times did I have to see this before I go, okay, I'm not going to see 47. Rob, you're very close. Start thinking about pricing those SPY puts, start pricing those ES puts. Now I mentioned the puts here because last time we talked a lot about minis and micros. In this environment, I am much more interested in trading uh, options because if we get some crazy rip, if we get some crazy news, um, unscheduled events, you know, suddenly the treasury secretary is on CNBC, suddenly there's a tweet, suddenly there's a member of Congress saying something about the virus bill, whatever it is, um, these are the unscheduled events that have re that have been wreaking havoc. So I've been playing predominantly options in this environment. And I got to tell you, if you're an options futures trader or an options ETF trader, I haven't even talked to you guys how, about how I play stocks with this tool. If you're playing options, even more so than traders playing the underlying futures, momentum and size are even more important to you. I think you know that, but for those traders saying, Options, Rob? Yeah, because this tool probably is even more valuable to traders trading options because size and momentum is going to dictate how aggressively you can be on the bid or offer when you're buying or offering out the options that you own. I'm predominantly long calls, long puts. I'm very directional. In fact, the long calls, long puts are basically an alternative to being long the ES or the NQ or whatever, right? So that's where I'm, I'm basically taking a, a very risk controlled alternative because remember, whatever you pay for your option, that's, that's the limit of your risk. If you're long puts and calls, whatever you paid, that's it. That's your risk. So if all hell breaks loose, you know, and I, I've never seen a situation even right now that a put or call gets caught up in some kind of crazy move and I'm not able to salvage 
some part of the value. So just, again, think about the kind of swings we're seeing and how you can control risk. All right. So again, I had 2447 in mind and, and what did what a book map do? It saved my you know what? Because rather than haplessly waiting for 2447, which was the halfback, which I'm telling you right now, a lot of traders were expecting the market to get up there so they could short. What did I do? Book map let me cheat. <laughs> I say cheat, but I'm really not cheating at all. Book map let me jump the line. Book map showed me that you're not getting there. Give up those seven points. You're not going to see them. And even if you do, fine. But this is where you need to build your position. This is where the wall of sellers are waiting. Adjust your plan, Rog. This is where it's at. So I hope that um, for those of you using levels like halfbacks and, and, and swing lows and swing highs, you can say, look, you can still be true to those levels, but, but don't be ignorant of the fact that we may not get there. And sure enough, take a look at what happened subsequent to that. Here we are coming back down off 2440. And here we are later on again, um, heading down to 2400. And what I want to talk about here to sort of wrap up our, our convo, because again, uh, what I really wanted to talk about was time initially. And then I thought, you know what, wait a minute, we've got a tremendous opportunity to talk about classic uh, S&P analysis. And let's talk about where we are right now, because this is something we could use going forward from this moment. And then uh, for those of you catching this on, on replay, see how it played out. So the other side of my level, it was 2447 to the upside, but the other side of my level is 2350. Uh, that is what I'm calling the, this is when they bring in the Kraken. When might the market sell off? When might the market really start to shift and accelerate to the downside? The swing low, I believe for the past two sessions, is 2350. So I can now, just like we were looking at 2447, I can now start to get a better grip on whether or not that's really going to be the level at which we crush a lot of orders, that we fill a lot of orders and sort of catapult, in this case, lower, whether or not that might happen a little higher, whether or not that might happen a little lower, or whether there's no size waiting at 2350 at all, and that's not really going to be the decision level, right? Those are those are my decisions now. So we took advantage of bookmap on the limit down move to be bullish because we fade those limit moves. We wrote it higher. My my expectation was to see the half back of 2447. Bookmap said, nope, it's 2440. Thank you, bookmap. And then now, as we sold off, now I'm thinking, all right, if we're gonna if we're gonna break down that that 2350 swing low released a crack in level uh, again i'm going to use the book map to show me maybe it's 2360 maybe the resistance i want to short is 2380 proactively to take advantage of the momentum down through 2350 maybe there's no size at 2350 and it's not going to really be sort of a threshold that that instigates more momentum but i am increasingly bearish as we trade down towards these levels and if I can short 2380 or buy puts at 2380, or if I can see 2360 break and maybe that's that at least a crack in level, those are the things now that I can make decisions about. So while I have these uh, general levels to watch, 2347 halfback, 2350 swing low, I can fine tune them now with the transparency, with the X-ray that I get with with the book map. And that's quite frankly, that's you know in in 30 minutes. You just looked at the trades that I have in the morning and how key a role, especially for the short that I have right now, especially for the SPY puts um, that I have right now, how key that was. Because if I was waiting for halfback, I'd never get it. Not that I would still be long. Right? I would have I would have rolled out of the long eventually, but I wouldn't have had the cue and the visual cue to get short, to realize that the market was going to front run that halfback level. All right. Okay. Any questions? Uh, any questions now? Uh, yeah, a few questions in here. Uh, let's see. Um, see, Michael's asking about uh, if you could define or um, redefine what the clearing is. I don't know if, if it's the initial balance or. Oh, sure, sure, sure. So that's a great question. So the clearing range is 
between 9.30 and 10 Eastern. It's the first 30 minutes after the bell rings. The initial balance range that Bruce just mentioned, that's another level to watch. And that is the first 60 minutes after the bell rings. That's the 9.30 to 10.30 levels. And I do watch initial balance levels as well. Uh, again, if you want to see if there's going to be just a crush of, of participation of volume, those initial levels, uh, balance levels, those clearing range levels, you want to see if they're they're having corresponding um, volume or, or orders waiting at those key levels with, with the book map. So in a lot of ways, um, can you trade right off book map? I think you can. But yeah. I think the way that a lot of traders are, and I think you really can, I think that though a lot of traders, as they're learning, um, when I say trade, I mean, clearly you guys can execute this platform and eventually if all you want to look at is book map, that's fine. But I think for a lot of traders, that might be too daunting a shift. And I'd hate for such a large leap to prevent people from using this tool. And what I find is my traders love to assimilate. They, they like to take the tools they're using now on whatever charts they're using now and run book map uh, next to it. And that's what I've been doing for the last year. And and I think that's a very effective way of using um Maybe the current approach you're you're using on another platform, but then add something that that other platform cannot give you, and that's this transparency. So I'm a big fan of finding ways for traders to say, "Gosh, I don't want to make this big leap," and I'm like, "It's not a leap. It's not even a change. You're supplementing what you're doing. You're not supplanting what you're doing. You're supplementing." But anyways, yes, clearing range is the first 30 minutes after the bell, and initial balance is the first 60, and it's just a high to low range that's established during that time. Okay, and um, how about, I mean, I'm just kind of curious myself, like um, how do you apply that to like the limit up and the limit down uh, scenario? I mean, you're, you're, you talked about the first, like, I don't know, 30 seconds or minute, minute or, or so? Oh, so so normally under sort of normal conditions, and we are so far from normal right now, it's not even funny. Um, normally, I would look for clearing range, high to lows, and look for breaches, and, and look for pullbacks after the breach to play in the direction of the breach. But in this environment, once the limit move has occurred, uh, like I said, we play a completely different playbook. And the playbook that I then operate from is the let's fade the limit move to the downside because we know there's going to be a lot of traders in the first 90 minutes or so that are looking for a rally after the limit down and oftentimes I'll look for uh, a fade of that limit move up until I start nearing my halfback. So today that was the game plan. And again, it doesn't matter if you're playing clearing range levels, initial ba initial balance levels, or we get something as crazy as a, as, a, as a limit move to the downside and you know we open on the bell, um, we just play a different uh, set of tactics. Okay, and, and are, the, are those um, data studies that you have done yourself on, on some of those, like the clearing range? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I think the clearing range is something that a lot of, I mean, it, an actual old pick trader taught me that one. I know back when I was trading the big S, SP contract, the full-size contract, um, a pit trader taught me that. And, and, and you'll see the clearing range, you know, for those of you that are curious, that's just a phenomena that has occurred in, in, in any pit traded market forever. Uh, that's just something, one of those pit traded phenomenons that now we see that psychology is still very much happening. And remember, where the clearing range is literally where they're clearing the orders off their books. And I think that's something that, again, book map is going to more accurately, rather than just being a time assessed high low, book map is going to give you something far better, which is, okay, this is where the size uh, picked up near the high, this is where the size picked up near the low, and you're going to get a much more accurate view of where the true breaches, the truer breaches, not just the time-based breaches, but the truer breaches are going to occur because you can see the participation at the upper part of the range and the lower part of the range. I hope that hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm just kind of curious, like, um, let's just go with uh, maybe like uh, oil inventories or something like that, something like a, a, a you know, economic release that is uh, scheduled. Uh, and after the, you know, initial volatility, um, I guess based on some of your studies about the first minute or or 30 seconds or or what um, whatever it is, um, you you have some some studies on that. But um, are you also looking at the heat map and and when the liquidity starts to come back in as well? Oh sure, okay, I see what you're saying. So 
you know, you, you definitely could. I think the liquidity application for me isn't necessarily going to be like, let's say with crude oil inventories that we did have today. Um, for me, it's going to be more. So again, that might be one that's better for one, maybe one of the scalpers or, or more pure momentum players that you have speaking. But for me, um, that liquidity is going to be like the way that I showed you guys once we broke 2400 on the ES, how the structure got very almost skeletal. It wasn't as full. Um, that's that's what I'm looking for. What's the participation like beyond certain levels or what's the particip participation like um, as we get to a certain level? So it's more it's more like I have a particular level in mind and now I'm confirming it with the book map. Can you do it the other way around? Uh, for sure, uh, for sure. So if the clearing range is lightly participated, I'm probably going to have a whole lot less trust in the highs and lows that were put in. But I, I probably, I, I, from my experience using it, I'm probably not the right person to to answer that. I mean, I could definitely, you know, um, look at some of my notes. But yeah, I'm more specific to a level that I had sort of already forecasted. Like in the case of the 2447, Bookmap came in and told me, no, it's 2440. Does that sort of answer the question, Bruce? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's just curious that, you know, like on, on some of those uh, economic releases, they, it, it, uh, you, you can see everything gets dark uh, in the liquidity mm -hmm. heat mm -hmm. map because uh, mm -hmm. no one wants the, to take the risk. Um, and then it goes pr precisely to those areas like you were sh showing uh, uh, today with the limit locked down. Um, and, uh, and you're looking for it to go to those areas. Uh, and those guys are staying in the in the order book. Uh, it's the same same concept um, during the you know economic releases. Uh, and I'm just yeah curious if you wait to see like some of that liquidity popping back in um, and starting to light up the the order book. Um, and and instead of instead of it being a, a time based study. Gotcha, gotcha. So after the event, you know, the, the using using inventories or natural gas inventories or FOMC, sure. Um, I'll tell you, usually I'm flat during those events. And what I'll do is I'll wait for Bookmap to give me more structure. I'll wait for my other charts to give me more structure. And then I'll go right back to confirming levels at size. So a lot of times I'll be flat into those events and then I'll wait for everything to start populating. So I almost can see uh, the stepping stones, if you will, in the moments after the initial impact. Uh, same thing can go for earnings, same thing can go for any major event, but I'll usually wait for Bookmap to sort of repopulate and then give me the levels that I think that other people can't see, quite frankly. So I'll, I'll wait, if that makes sense. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, excellent. Um, let's see here, a bunch of uh, longer questions here, so let me try to uh, read these out here. Um, so let's see. Um, Uh, Jerry's asking about why not do homework or your homework on the pre-market and then um, wait three to five minutes on the open. So uh, that is what we did. Yeah. So the halfback, the halfback was the the basic kind of classic S and P analysis, the swing lows. Sure. And then I'm just waiting to see those confirm. So. Okay. Yeah, that, that is pretty much what I do. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see, David. Uh, yeah, more than one data feed. Yeah, you can have multiple data feeds in Bookmap. You can be, you know, connected to um, five different futures brokers at the same time, uh, as well as digital currencies and stocks. Okay, all all in the same moment. Uh, you just need to have the data feeds. Uh, let's see. Michael is asking. Uh, last time you presented, you said um, you look for. Uh, a congestion of volume bubbles um, at your levels and then traders with large volume uh, out of that congestion. Uh, is that kind of a summary of your style? You know, that's a great question. So I was just, so <laughs> timing on that's so awesome. See what we're getting right now? Remember I said I'm looking for 2350 as a swing low? What do you guys think is gonna be the catalyst, sort of the the shoots and ladders, if you will, if you got, now I'm dating myself. Look at look at look at the way we're kind of getting that those that congestion of bubbles around this area, which is almost 10 to 12 points above my swing low. So if we're going to have an event a move, I have a feeling based on what I'm seeing right now. So to your point, yes, I will still look at those kinds of things, and and I think we're getting that right now. And and I think it's I think that these uh, levels are going to front run. I think these traders are going to front run that 2350 swing low. 
and they're going to start to build their shorts either from a momentum standpoint here uh, through 2360 and not 2350, although we'll probably bounce a bit at 2350. But I think the really smart traders right now, and it's very subtle, but you can see them, boom, boom, right through here, 2380. So I think traders are fading 2380. They're fading 2362, but when we have that big move that flushed the downside, it may not really be through 2350. It might really start with 23. 60 because you can see a little bit of size down here at 50. I'm actually going to squeeze in a little bit more data. You see that there? You can see some, but I don't know. I think the battle is being fought right now at 60. Does that make sense in terms of, and you can see the dots as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and in that context there, exactly what you're talking about are the dots at here at 60 uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and that context of the liquidity just underneath it. Uh, and remember, I'm also really close to a level, so I'm not just letting, and again, everyone could use it differently, but I'm, I'm already you know, kind of going back to the homework question. I've already done the homework, right? I know where my halfback was. I know where my swing low is, but look how much more accurately, and I think the edge that I'm getting based upon the fact that I'm near a level that my homework told me to get interested at, but I'm getting more accuracy around it because I've got the book map. Okay, perfect. Um, so uh let's see um if, if you could uh raggy could you just right click on one of the volume dots there and then go to the settings of course because uh, they want to take a look at your uh, dot settings so they're, uh, they're default gang i don't do anything there's nothing sexy here <laughs> and uh oh, and you're using the uh, 7.1 alpha version of bookmap it has the volume delta dots there um as your uh so it's mm -hmm. either going to it's either it's going to be buy minus sell. So it's either going to be red or it's going to be green, and not not total volume, um, David. So that that's uh, uh, the settings there. And I don't think it, I don't think anything that I'm doing is going to change with the volume delta versus. I mean, I'm still. It's I don't think it's going to change what you're thinking. I think the volume delta, um, what what I do like about it, I think it's a cleaner. I feel like I have more conviction when I'm looking at them, but but you'll notice it's not going to change what I'm doing. It's not going to change my decision, but it is it is very cool. And the thing that I did not have on is the VWAP. And again, when we're above or below the VWAP, I think there's a significant sh um, shift in terms of sentiment. Right, right, okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see, Tim is asking about, um, do you think the market will stop short selling uh, and if you think it would uh, stabilize the market a bit, I'm not sure exactly what, what you're asking, uh, Tim. Tim, are you, are you asking intraday or end of day? I, I mean, I'm hearing, is, is this a bottom? Is that what you're asking me? And if you are, no. <laughs> no, my friend. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I believe it, that's kind of the direction here. Um, it, that if they're going to stop, you know, the short selling, um, is that going to stabilize the market here? Oh, you mean if, oh, if, if they ban short selling? Ah, okay, if that's the question, Tim, if they're gonna ban short selling, um, that would be, and I'm gonna put it out there, that would be singularly the most stupid thing that we could do. Because if you look at what France just did, they banned short selling and they reopened and they were down 4% on the reopen. The market hates when you tell it it can't do something. And uh, I think if we were to do something that ridiculous, uh, it would only create on the reopen a even much more exaggerated sell. Because now the market's gonna panic because out of the blue, you know, we're going to be told we can't get in or out. It's going to make people just get out, right? We all panic the same way. Get me out now. So if that was a question, if we do happen to ban short selling for a session or two, it would be, uh, it would open up to a catastrophically down day. Um, again, France was down 4.1% upon the reopen of the uh, Cat Courant. Not pretty. Yeah, not pretty at all. Right, right. Yeah, make, makes, you know, a really clear, clear sense. Um, no one's going to want to buy. Uh, until it's really good. <laughs> um, uh, uh, let's see, Tim is also following up. How do you use the CVP and SVP uh, volume columns that you have on there? Um, yeah, I'm just looking. Yeah, I'm just looking for size and participation. Uh, you know, we know that there's a certain amount of conviction that's going to be associated with size. Uh, so you could you can also get an idea of where the most pain is being felt. You know, that's that's also another way of looking at it. So. You know, where's the most pain being felt above or below key levels like that? But um, mostly I'm, I'm just kind of paying attention to them. They're not a big part of the strategy. I don't talk about them much, but I do glance at them. 
uh, I do want to see where the size is at, and it, it's sort of different uh, pain and sort of pleasure thresholds, if you will. You know, um, if those are if those are levels or humps to get past, I think it's key that we do get past them. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, Samir is uh, also wondering um, about some of the currencies. If you can show a, um, a, a currency uh, chart. I didn't do any currencies this morning. I'm, I'm showing you guys only what I did today. I didn't. I didn't do it. I was looking at the yen. I was thinking about the yen, but the ES limit down pretty much just. And maybe another time we could definitely do that. But I didn't. I didn't. I'm showing you guys just the trades from today, so I don't have any screenshots from the okay. yen or the euro or anything. Uh, okay, and Samir, uh, the last uh, webinar that uh, Raggy um, uh, hosted, she she did go over uh, some of those. So if you want to watch the recording, uh, it's on the YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, let's see here, one more question from Kendall. Um, he's wondering, if, I guess he's uh, correlating here maybe the um, a half um, or a percentage from the limit down. Uh, area as uh, maybe some sort of uh, kind of bigger figure uh, of why 60 might be uh, being defended right now? You know, the cool thing is, and I, and I love the question, Ken, because all of us are going to use different tools and different calculations, arithmetic to say, well, maybe this is going to be a decision level or a reaction level. The cool thing is I would jot all of those down, just like I jotted down my, my swing lows and my halfbacks and clearing range highs and lows and initial balance. Those are all levels that I'll write down in an index card. And then I'll go take a look at the book map and the book map will tell me, nope, that's not really a level or yes, it is. So I don't want to ever uh, dissuade anybody from doing that kind of homework or even wondering if that's the case. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have all those levels written down and I'll just wait for bookmark to tell me if book map to tell me. I know someone said it sounded like I said bookmark over and over again, and maybe it did. <laughs> um, book map to tell me uh, that that level is in play. Does that make sense? So definitely keep them, write them down, put them on, put them on an index card and then let book map tell me, tell you whether or not there's some size waiting there and if there's some conviction behind that level or not. Right, right. Oh, uh, great, great, uh, great answer. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, Tim is asking about uh, where you put that F uh, around that twenty three eighty area. Um, are you also like looking for longs above that area once you, once uh, maybe you see some size uh, on the buy on the mm, bid? Or good question. So that's a good question. So if there's going to be a rip higher, could that level instigate that yes well so what i like to see if we're actually getting momentum it's almost like a running start um it's not always but you'll see that very often we have a few examples of it here if that 2380 level is going to be a level that we will run through i have to see not okay let me see if i can show you what i okay here we go see how this is really big right there and then it's increasingly sort of smaller so the closer we're getting to the level, the smaller, the less sort of, to my mind, the less momentum, the less force we have. If we're gonna bust up through 2380, not that we can't any other way, but if we're gonna bust up through 2380, I'd rather see a small dot and a larger dot and a larger dot and a larger dot. So now it's almost like you've got a running start. Does that? Resonate and notice that normally uh, when we exhaust, it's just the opposite. So the, the support is larger, and then when we get to the resistance, it's smaller. And right. I'd have to see the opposite to, for a breakthrough. Right, right. In fact, it did it, it did it just again. Do you see that? Larger, smaller, 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 wimped out, boom. Right, yeah, precisely. Um, okay. Um, well, you know, I, I, I do want to mention um, about the exhaustion, uh, uh, Raggy, like, um, uh, and just uh, it's going to sound a little bit like a, a promo here, um, but uh, uh, we we will have a, um, a stop and uh, iceberg uh, a tracker um, that is coming out that like the 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 dip below into 2355 right there. A lot of times, you know, you'll see that that uh, cleaning out, um, you know, flush through. Uh, and then w w what was it? Was it stops? I mean, it's big volume. Right, but if there's if it's has completely stopped out everybody, 
you're looking for new initiated buying to come in, uh, this this will be a really really nice confluence uh, to get, to give insight to that. It's like okay, well everyone stopped out, uh, we can see that. Um, and then, uh, and then you'd be looking for that running momentum that you're just talking about here up at, at 2380. By the way, gang, um, what we're seeing right now, and I'm just seeing it right now, uh, we're getting reports that Bernie Sanders is suspending his presidential campaign. And as soon as I saw that go through the wires, so the dots got a little bit bigger, we might see a quick little move to the upside on this, but I would still fade it, by the way. So for those of you that are still trading live, I would still fade this move, but it might not be until we get to about 2400. And if you're wondering why, that's that's the news that's hitting the airwaves right now. And see how it's getting a little sketchy up now? I like that. If it starts getting thin and we don't have the dots stacking on top of each other, I'm going to be even happier to start to fade between 2390 and 2400. In fact, I might look to do that right now. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead, Bruce. No, sorry. no, not at all. Not at all. That was it. That was it. Um, and uh, uh, let's see here. Um, well, Todd is asking about um, spoofing. Uh, and um, uh, how you uh, read that um, and how it might be distorting um, some of the levels that you're looking at. You know, Todd, this might sound a little Pollyanna. I quite frankly don't, um, I don't give it another thought when I'm looking at this uh, because I'm already looking at levels that, again, 2400 is a major psychological level. Um, I'm already looking at levels that I believe are going to have participation, uh, period. So I'll, I'll tell you clearly. I mean, we we talk about disruptive algorithms, right? I mean, as if algorithms are the are the enemy. Um, my own, my enemy is in the mirror. I know that. Uh, for those of you that have, been, that have been trading a while, you know, pit traders were the enemy. Then systems were the enemy. Then you know, so there's always something. So the whole idea, and my from my understanding of the spoofing, and I'm no expert, but it's just trying to leapfrog, try to outpace other market participants. So what I find it does is it tends to maybe extend a move a little bit more than it normally would. So all I've done is I've just basically widened my expectation for volatility around certain moves. But I'll tell you, I think as far as I'm concerned, that's typically not done with a lot of size. And you'll start to see a lot of, let's see how the structure here Look how the dots are stacked. You see how they're getting not kind of stretched out a little bit? If if I'm going to be bamboozled by a move, it's going to be a move where things are a little bit more stretched out like that. There's not really true, thick, um, widespread participation. I hope that's making sense because look at the visual now. Look how sketchy it is in there, right? I don't I don't feel that um, that's truly bullish momentum at the moment. So I don't know that it answers the question. The truth of the matter is I really don't give it another thought. And uh, as we come up into the volume weighted average price, um, I'm already short now, and I'd be willing to short all the way up into 2400. So I'll just trade what I can see and then trust that tools that I've used and psychological levels are still going to allow me to do what I've always done for 30 years. And, and yeah, I know that's probably a, an issue, but I'm probably the wrong girl to ask. I just don't give it another thought. Right, right. Okay. No, I, I think it's a really good point because um, uh, you can see the spoofing. Uh, you, you can see the behavior of the algos when you zoom in, but you're not zoomed in. You're looking at a bigger picture here. I guess, yeah, if, if they're going to spoof to the tune of, and what are they usually spoofing to the tune of? One or two ticks, right? Um, so it's just not going to typically play a role in my zones because my zones are usually wider and whatever is happening algorithmically in that is going to be noise and it's not going to disrupt my signal. Right, right. Okay. Um, yeah, perfect. Um, let's see here. Uh, just uh, one more question. Um, well, some one one question you just answered about the the, the low volume pullback, basically, um, and uh, the kind of sketchy uh, volume that you saw maybe even above certain ranges um, that, uh, you know, it's not any confirmation at all for you're looking for the fade. Uh, that kind of answered a, a few of the different questions there. Um, and uh, let's see, um, any questions? Like, do you do you trade like uh, maybe some of the ultra short um, S and P or any of the uh, stocks, uh, and how you might trade those differently? I I do trade the stocks, but I don't trade them differently. So what I keep in mind is even the ultra shorts, the three X, etc. They're going to do what they're 
the market that they're based upon, whether that be the 3X bulls, 3X bears, whatever the underlying is, they're going to behave pretty much in the same way. And if I am trading stocks, I want them to be stocks that are heavily weighted within the index, the sectors that are heavily weighted within the index. So I do want there to be that, that weighting that uh, helps me out. So by the way, I mentioned that I would be willing to short again near 2400. I'm probably going to end up having to do that. And you see how we went from small, small, small to big and we busted up through? That's, and, and again, I think this is purely on the fact that there's some bullishness because Sanders suspended his presidential campaign. And this is what's tricky, um, but I would still fade it. So uh, to your, um, your question about stocks, yeah, so if I'm trading the S&P, I'm going to be looking at Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Google, JP Morgan. I'll be looking at the XLF, the XLV. I'll be looking at tech. So those heavily weighted sectors and stocks within that within that index. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I think I think that's it. Uh, you, you answered everything. Awesome. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, oh, guys, I, I, I'm sorry. I haven't put this in the chat for a bit here. Um, here is Raggy's um, uh, contact information uh, if you want to reach out to her. Uh, and then there's also the bookmap special offers in there uh, from her as well. Uh, it's in the chat. And um, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's. I think I think that's it. Any any closing thoughts, uh, Raggy? No, just be cautious out there, gang. I mean, I think that as much as we have the power of this kind of transparency with with bookmap, we are in historical times. I've traded through a lot of things, whether that be the implosion of long term capital management. Uh, whether that be as many as you have as well, 2008, flash crashes like 2010. Um, this is unlike those. This is very, very different. So just be careful. Um, I think tools like this are going to add another layer of confirmation that most market participants really don't have. So probably more than ever, this kind of transparency is going to be really more, val again, more valuable than ever. Um, you know, again, the confidence I have right now to stay short because of the size I see overhead, because of the sketchiness, as I've mentioned, because of the way in which um, we're moving between my initial fader on 80. Uh, again, I'm willing to be a fader up into 2400. Had I not seen sort of what's going on inside the one minute candle, the five minute candle, I, I might've gotten um, taken out or I might've even gotten long and I'm not interested in either. So uh, convictions higher this way and I, and I feel that I'm able to get the, uh, the better direction out of the market based on these tools. So, but be careful, be careful out there, gang. As I reminded my traders uh, this morning, flat is a position. And if all you're gonna do is, you know, turn your book map on for a couple of days and just study it, just watch it for a few hours, um, it's gonna give you uh, so much of an education in terms of order flow. Okay, okay, excellent. Uh, well, thank you very much, Raggy. Uh, another uh, just excellent uh, presentation. Uh, boy, we're really, really happy to have you here. Uh, and um, uh, anyway, uh, look forward to uh, uh, doing it again sometime. Uh, everybody, thank you very much for coming, uh, and uh, we'll catch up another time. Thanks so much. Okay. All right. Thanks, Raggy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.